I'd be curious just like your world view in general of the alien phenomenon, which I'm sure you've studied in great length, far beyond most people. Like, what do you think is going on? Okay, well, this is based on my personal experiences and also the fact that I've been researching this nonstop since uh, I was 13, so 30 years, so three decades. I've been trying to figure this out. I've talked with uh, at least hundreds, if not thousands, of experiencers and UFO researchers, in addition to the other you know, 10, 20, 30,000 other people about other topics. So and I've, I've studied physics, alchemy, mythology. I mean, I try to cover as broad of a field as I can, because like you said, it is very confusing because we're dealing with a very complex phenomenon that tries to hide itself. It doesn't want the truth about itself to be known, right? And then you've also got all those scammers and grifters uh, and as you said, limited hangouts, like disinformation agents, essentially. Yeah. Um, and so how do you sort through that? Well, it's, it's, it's a lot like how astronomers use giant radio, radio antenna arrays to try to probe the distant regions of the, of the universe, you know, find galaxies that are just so far away you can't even see them with a telescope right well they do it by aggregating a, a, a huge amount of data and then using filtering software to take out the noise and then trying to find that that faint signal of what they're looking for and the same thing with this you have to deal with as much data as possible from as, as wide of a field as possible and so that's what i've done now i'm not saying that my viewpoint is the absolute 100 percent truth i'm just saying that i've done the best that i possibly could with the data that i had while also being mindful of my own sacred cows, my own biases, you know, my own shortcomings. All right. So with that preface aside, my, my view, all right. So my, my view is that we are dealing with non-human intelligences that come from all places of existence outside of our current local space time. So that can mean from parallel realities. It can mean from the future, from the ancient past of the time travelers, you know, it can be from a higher realm or higher dimension beyond the physical all right so we have this, this gamut of other you know other places other beings other times that for whatever reason they're here now probably because humanity earth this period in, in our history is sort of a sort of a nexus point or a, a switch point on a on a the greater grander scale of a timeline that affects other beings other realities and so on in, in the future so Whatever happens in the distant future, a lot of it probably can be traced back to what's going on right here, right now. And so you have an interest by a diverse selection of different beings, some more positive, some more negative, some more neutral, that have a stake in what's going on right here, right now. Yeah. All right. And and at the very highest, at the very highest level, you can look at it from a divine spiritual viewpoint, which is that we are God sparks. You know, we are God sparks that are here in this, uh, this, this programmed dream simulation, which has an energy farm component to it or a funny farm component to it. Cause if you, if you, if you think about humanity and just how spiritually insane a lot of us are and, and asleep and programmed and just backwards, right? It's almost like a funny farm, not just an energy farm, but there's that component. There's a school component to it. What I'm saying is that there are spiritual agendas, there's alien agendas, there's human political agendas, and they're all stacked atop of each other. And, you know, and some, to, to some degree interacting with each other. So it's a very complex uh, experience that we're having here on Earth. And as far as the alien component goes, well, the aliens, are, they're concerned about their own survival, their own resources, their own power and reach and so on, right? Uh, either, either protecting and preserving it or trying to expand it. Uh, and so we have competing alien agendas that are intersecting here right now. And it's all sort of coming to a head. And I think why the reason why it's coming to a head is because human evolution itself, like our civilizational evolution, we're reaching a critical point in terms of power, technology, uh, self-awareness, you know, just a, a sense of maturity that is starting to make us become a threat to certain alien agendas. You know, we're, we're not just primitive tribes that we're, we're, not, we're not just a, an agrarian civilization anymore. Yeah. We, have the, we have the capability now due to our black programs and our black black ops technologies to colonize the moon, Mars, you know, other to, to to intrude upon what they perceive as their own territory that they've dominated for for cycles of civilization beyond even ours, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think they're they're trying to take control of it by some of them are trying to take control of it by infiltrating our power structure and to ensure that when this technology develops, it's used as they want it to be used. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because yep. the thing is so so if aliens had taken a completely hands-off approach. I think our 
our black ops programs would have eventually, it might've taken longer, but they would have eventually developed anti-gravity, you know, interdimensional phasing technologies, um, free energy to be, and then like, like weapons we can't even imagine. And so in order to get ahead of that, I think they made deals. So when you, when you mentioned the, the Eisenhower treaty, for example, I mean, that's conspiracy rumor that you can't really confirm, but a lot, a lot of things point to it. A lot of things point to it. So for example, during that time period, where the Eisenhower Treaty was supposedly made, I think it was like 1954. Like it wasn't. I think it was right around the time period. Yep. There were a number of contactees who were in touch with the Nordic beings, uh, who had a pretty good relation with them. And then right within within about that 10 year time time window, these contactees were essentially told that um, things have turned bad and we can't be around you. We can't we can't be here anymore to the degree that we were before. And a lot of them pulled back and they had they had to to kind of tighten their security and limit the amount of contact that they could make. And that correlated with the Eisenhower Treaty, supposedly, where the Nordic alliance was uh, rejected, that the treaty was rejected. Why? Because there were other alien factions that promised, you know, technology, power, intelligence to the government. And at the time, the government was dealing with the Soviet Union, you know, the Cold War, and they were worried about it. So the government was like, yeah, heck yeah, we're going we're gonna to take these guys over you, you know, space hippies, because we, we don't want your wisdom. We don't want your advice. We don't want to, to uh, de denuclearize our, ourselves. We want what we need to protect national security. Mm -hmm. So a deal was made with the devil, most likely. And if you look at what happened after that, within 10 years, you had JFK taken out. And, just, you know, and not too long before that, you had Eisenhower. Uh, warning about the military industrial complex before he left office. You know, yeah. that, that was his, his that was his going away speech. So if you put all those pieces together, it's, it, you know, everything kind of supports each other that some sort of switch happened at the time. And essentially what you had is you had a black ops military industrial complex, you know, CIA program or, you know, a conglomerate, like a, like a, like a giant monster that was in alliance with certain negative alien factions. And they took over a lot of the functions of, of what of the real power control system on earth from that time forward and so everything from the 1960s onward has been uh under the the is, is moving towards the apex of what nowadays we would call the great reset which is the opposite of the great awakening a lot of that developed around that time probably due to alliances made with non-human powers that had humanity's best interests not at heart